Okay, so on a huge round of applause, it's Tom Ritchie. Hi, how are we all doing today? Yeah. Now, I'm not sure who decided it would be a good idea for me um, to come onto this stage and try and entertain you tonight, because I don't know how many of you out there actually listen to Livewire 1350. Yeah, that's about right. That's about, right. about one listener. Now, when I was asked to come on the show, I thought, oh, maybe people might know me from my show. And I imagined a conversation kind of going something like this. Oh, have you heard that really funny guy, Tom Ritchie, on Live Wire 13.50 a.m.? No. Oh, okay then. But anyway, I'm here, and it'll be alright, I guess. Um, it's time to get some audience participation into the show, just to, keep, just to make sure that you are... Uh, not too bored while I ramble on up here. How many of you in the room have Twitter? Woo! Okay, so while we're all here, just get your phones out, follow me at the Tom Ritchie, I'm an absolute hoot. Um, but, but anyway, I'm not sure um, many of you have realised, but Twitter is actually the birthplace of one of the fastest growing religions on the face of the planet. Now, um, all of these people, normally 13-year-old girls, um, they are more extreme than an evangelical Christian or even someone in Al-Qaeda. Um, now, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that, but um, they are willing to cut themselves for their cause, for their martyr. Their martyr's Twitter feed is their Quran. They have over 35 million followers. I've, I'm, of course, talking about Justin Bieber and his believers. Now, uh, I'm not sure how many... <laughs> I'm not sure who sang that lyric, but I'm pretty sure it was the Venga Boys. Um, I listened to songs like that, Funeral for a Friend, Fall Out Boy, all of those kind of artists, and I did not cut myself one fucking time. Now, when Justin Bieber sings to me about him wanting to be my boyfriend, it does drive me to self-harm, but I thought that this would feed into those prepubescent girls just like it'd be kind of like the amber nectar to them. But, I can't wait for about maybe 15, 20 years down the line when I'm, you know, by then hopefully I'll be able to grow a beard. But, um, <laughs> you know, I'll be, a, I'll be a 40 year old man, a cynic essentially, and I'll ask a woman, I'll go to her and I'll say, so are you a believer? And they'll either look down, they'll vehemently deny it, or they'll be in the LCR on a Saturday night trying to find some strange because they can't let go. <laughs> yes. uh, are there any Catholics in the room? Yeah. Okay, this is a disclaimer. You're probably not going to like this one. Um, Pope Benedict, of course, retired, uh, citing that he wasn't in good enough health. Maybe it was because he was too old. Now, I've always lived by the creed that you, you are as young as you feel, but Catholics generally live by the creed of you're as young as the people you feel. So I imagine that Pope Benedict was feeling, was feeling quite sprightly by the time he retired, and I don't quite buy his story. Now, there was a woman in Milwaukee, I don't know if anyone saw this, um, but she has made a rather daring portrait of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. She has used over 17,000 condoms to create a portrait of the great man. And um, due to his comments uh, regarding uh, condoms being sent out to Africa to try and slow down the AIDS epidemic, of course, being the fascist bastard that he is, he disagreed. Um, <coughs> now, she, using over 17,000 condoms for a piece of art, and I am, for one, I'm definitely up for sticking a middle finger right in that guy's face, but isn't that a bit counterintuitive? <laughs> if she used 17,000 used condoms, then maybe I could get on board. <laughs> um, and I think the ultimate fuck you to Pope Benedict would actually be sending those 17,000 condoms out to Africa with a Barry White CD and letting them get down to business, really, so... <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Tom Ritchie. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>